Today, I'm gonna to show you how this cool new piece of gear from Kirk is gonna make your life easier as an advanced panorama photographer, and also really completes the ultimate lightweight fluid head setup, in my opinion. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to Approaching the Scene. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who's been subscribing, liking, sharing the videos with your friends. The channel's really been growing over this holiday season, and, and it's really been a wonderful uh, New Year's gift to me to just see the community growing. And this whole thing is about community and conversation, so please lend your voice in the comments, ask me questions in the comments, just hit me via email, I'm easy to get. You know, the, the conversation goes nowhere if your voice isn't a part of it. So this content's driven as much by you as it is by me. So again, I'm here uh, in Portland, Oregon, gearing up for everything, and, and I've been waiting for this part to come. It's something I've been collaborating with, with uh, Kirk Enterprise Solutions, Jeff Kirk at Kirk Enterprise Solutions, on for a little while, and it's here, and it's perfect, and I'm super excited to share it with you. Now, I'm gonna show you some, some fun bits of gear today. Some can either adapt what you've already got to get this functionality or this whole thing, and I'm gonna put links in the video description. So if you just go up to the top of the video, click that show more, and there'll be links to all this stuff. So don't, don't worry too much about finding it. It's all right there along with gear links to everything that I use. My whole kit's linked there. So, all right, let me talk about what this is. And I'll, and I'll kind of give you the evolution here. So anybody that knows me knows that I love fluid heads. I'm just not a fan of using ball heads for still photography or really for for much of anything, because the minute you go to reposition, if you want to shift a little left, up, or down, you lose level. And with the fluid head, you can both do wonderful video and hybrid shooting, but you can also just recompose without losing level. You get set up, and it's just easy to shift a little bit or tilt a little bit. I've got plenty of videos on still uh, on on fluid heads for still photography. If you, if you haven't heard about it before, just search my channel, and you'll see plenty on fluid heads. But the 500 AH Manfrotto, to me. It's kind of the perfect fluid head for those of us using DSLRs or mirrorless cameras for still photography, maybe a little light videography. It, it holds just fine for me, even using my 500 lens, uh, sort of gimbal style. It, 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 hold, it has a nice motion. It doesn't have a lot of adjustability, but it's lightweight. It weighs exactly the same as a really right stuff BH55 head. And Kirk Enterprise Solutions has kind of noticed what a great head this is too. Now, in just all, uh, you know, making sure that I give you guys all notice, I'm a Kirk Enterprise Solutions ambassador, not because they pay me money, but because I absolutely love their products, and I think they're great people, um, and I can't say that about every big support company out there that makes great stuff, so I really like the people at Kirk. They're really sweet people, and they make great stuff, and they listen, so... One thing Jeff Kirk did that I think was just awesome was designed a new bridge, a new top for the Manfrotto 500 AH that both saves weight and it puts this rotating, nice, big, easy to use Kirk clamp right on top of the, of the head. And I originally took one look at it and I thought, and it also puts it so that it's centered directly over the axis of rotation of your fluid head. So the center of this, the center marker on that is right over the center of rotation of your fluid head, which is wonderful for panoramic purposes because this thing's a little asymmetric. It's tough to figure that out exactly. Um, and, you know, I had for a long time been using these LRP1 panorama nodal sliders from Kirk Enterprise Solutions. It's a really nice slider. And like the clamp on the top of this head, one of the cool things about it is that you can just pull its integrated Allen key out turn this little Allen in the middle of it loose and spin this thing 90 degrees. So you can mount your long plated lens. You can sort of mount your camera however you want. So it, it rotates, it's got a little square fitting underneath that lets you lock this thing in either orientation, which is great. Same thing on this, on the top of the head. So I took one look at this and I thought, wow, you know, for, for panoramas and for getting your camera balanced so there's absolutely no flop with the fluid head, you mount this LRP1 on this new system, you get your balance right, and you can see, you can just move this thing around. Maybe I'm a little forward heavy. This is my, my older D850, which I'm about to get rid of with my 14 to 24 millimeter 2.8 lens on it. And you can see, the other great thing about it is because it spins right over the axis of rotation, this thing's perfect for advanced panoramas where you need to get your nodal point exact in order to avoid parallax. And if that 
all sounds like mumbo jumbo or gibberish. I have a free video about finding the nodal or the no parallax point for your lenses that you can download. I'll put a link to that. And there's a whole course on advanced panoramas and why you might want to know about that. So this thing really made the head more functional to me. It, it gives you more leeway to sort of get, get pulled back over the ax, over the nodal point with less gear. Uh, you don't need a panning clamp anymore. The head works as your panning clamp since it pans level and it lets you get adjusted right over that no nodal point. Now the problem came when I first got my Nikon Z6 and I got the new 14 to 30 millimeter lens because I went ahead and hooked that up on here. I'm just going to put the 850 down. I put that on here. This is, you know, the equivalent focal length goes a little bit longer, but you can see right off the bat here, this LRP1 sticks out well beyond the front edge of this lens. So even at 20 millimeters, even at 24 millimeters, you can see the nodal rail in the image. So it's in the way in every single panorama shot that you'd like to take. And you can't use this to get the camera balance because it's just, it's in the frame, it's too long. So I talked to Jeff about that and he was responsive. He built a really cool thing. So he built the LRP2, which is a much shorter nodal slider. Now, you know, there's other companies making short nodal sliders and long nodal sliders. It's great. The only problem is, you know, if you're taking multiple optics out there and you've got, you know, say a 70 to 200 lens and you want to shoot a pano and you need to get way back, well, this may not give you enough length for the, for to, to, uh, of a slider, for a no parallax slider, to get to the no parallax point. It's short. It works great for short lenses like this, some short wide angle primes or normal lenses on mirrorless where you don't have that mirror box and you've got a shorter flange distance. But it isn't necessarily the one nodal slide to rule them all. And if you're carrying lots of different gear on a big trip, say to Patagonia, do you want to have to take two nodal sliders with you and have two nodal sliders in your backpack? It's not that they're heavy, but they're expensive and they're not, they're not insignificant in weight. Um, so I talked to him, I started thinking about it. And I said, you know, what if there were a nodal slider where you could adjust, where did I set it? my new toy, I put it down, oh, my God. oh, there it is, I put it in my tripod stone bag. You could adjust where the clamp is on the no parallax slider, see? So this is the LRP3, and it essentially lets you slide that clamp, you can also still rotate it, it's got the integrated Allen, and I can loosen this up and rotate it 90 degrees to set a long lens with a foot in there. But it's got, it's really well designed. I asked for a few other things too. I asked for it to have a marker on the slide where you could easily see how many millimeters. There's a great gauge along here in millimeters, you know, where you're adjusting this to. So you can, you can do your no parallax measurements and just note where your slider is set for its clamp and then note where your slider is set on the head. It's two numbers to note now instead of one, but it lets you work with one nodal slider for short lenses, for long lenses. It's just really, really handy. And we also put, I asked for a little bit bigger bubble level and Kirk put such a nice, big, easy to read bubble level on the end of it uh, and calibrated the markings on both left and right and there's markings on the top so that you can look straight down on it. So there's three sets of millimeter markings. They, they're marked at centimeters and millimeters, and it's really easy to read. I can even see it without my reading glasses. Uh, and it's got a nice little mark for where you set it. And then another one here, whether you're looking straight down or whether you're looking at it from the side, you can read those markings. And just as an added bonus, he threw in a QD connector um, which is something I'm going to be talking about in weeks ahead. It's just a simple way. Uh, I love Luma has a strap where it has a QD and you just plug it into the socket, click, it's locked. And they've got them in the new L brackets for Kirk too. I'll talk about that all in a, in a subsequent video. But push a button, you're disconnected, click it in, locked for your strap, for your sling strap. 
uh, and you know other accessories. So kind of future proof the fact that this has that all built in. You know, one other thing I'll talk about that's really, really cool is that for those of you who bought an older Kirk Nodal slider, one of the things I love about this company, they don't leave people behind and say, well, just buy the new one. Um, they've got this thing dialed where you can just, you can take this off. You know how I showed you, you can rotate it so that you've got different orientations. We can also take it apart and they sell this little piece separately, which is the QRC 15Q. Don't worry, I'll put a link to this. And it's essentially that middle piece in the new LRP3. And so you can take this guy, drop it on your old LRP1 or 2. The 1 makes more sense since the 2 is kind of short. And all of a sudden, you get that same awesome functionality. Just got to get the bolt lined up here. There it is. Dial that guy in. Whoop. And now your old LRP1 suddenly does all the same sliding as the new LRP3. There's a little less finger room. It doesn't have the big, as big a bubble level up front. I'll put this on backwards, but it still has the little gauge where you can read where it is on the side. So, you know, you don't have to buy the whole new thing if you already have one of the nicer old ones. They've got just the little piece that you can buy that goes in the middle to convert it, which I think is a nice nod to their current customer base. Um, one other thing I'll talk about that's really cool with this, the fact that we can pull this, loosen this screw, turn it this way, and drop it back down, makes it so that if I'm using a really long lens and I'm kind of going gimbal style, like I've talked about, you know, I could, in the past, what I've done is connected a long rail to the stock foot. This is my 500 uh, PF, my, my absolute favorite long lens right now. It's lightweight, you can hand hold it. But when you are working on the tripod, you know what I've done in the past is just pull this whole assembly and replace the rail with a longer rail to get balanced over it. Well, with this new LRP3, I can set up here, and this thing is just bomb proof solid. You have no play. And all of a sudden, that gives me more leeway with a, the foot. This is actually Kirk's foot for either the Nikon 70 to 200 FLED or the 500 PF. It's a really, really nice piece. It's called the uh, LP64. It also has a QD connector so that you can connect that QD from the strap I was talking about. And what it allows you to do is, you know, let's, let's get here where we're set up. I'm actually further back than I want to be. I can slide this a little bit forward slide this guy a little bit forward, but let's say we were using something like an 800, it still lets you get right where you want to be to get balanced. It gives you a little bit more leeway to do that should you need to. And now all of a sudden you can use this gimbal style to track birds in flight or sports action or an air show, you know, whatever it is that you want. You loosen up your, your, your fluid head and all of a sudden you can track gimbal style. So some really, really cool stuff, fun things. Uh, I have a bunch of new stuff coming up in the weeks ahead to talk about that I'm really excited about. I'm, I'm actually taking the family skiing tomorrow. I'm just gonna take the little new Nikon Z50 with its uh, 16 to 50 pancake lens on it. And I'll be reviewing that camera pretty soon. Let's just say that, that we're keeping it as a family. It's such a fun, little, tiny, uh, high quality camera has a lot of the features of the Z cameras, not obviously all of them, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. We're gonna do some stuff on calibration, whether it's calibrating autofocus on lenses or your monitor for printing. There's gonna be a whole bunch of fun stuff coming. And again, I've got workshops coming up on Kauai next month and in Costa Rica and in Cuba. There's still a few slots for the second Cuba workshop. We sold out the first one so fast, we added a second one. I'll put links to those in the uh, video description too. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday full of great food and fun times with family. I sure did. We'll see you next week.